Yeah, what's up guys, it's Theo from Final Concept. So today we are going through how to create a stamp in Adobe Photoshop. Let's get started. Welcome to Final Concept. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Now before we get started, I want to emphasize that this is for educational purposes only or for people who want to know how their stamp will look like before they actually get the physical thing. So if for some reason you use this knowledge illegally, no one here on this channel is to blame for that. Anyway, let's go ahead and open up our application. So I have Photoshop running here and I'll go ahead and create a new file. You can leave the size to whatever you want, but I'll just like always, I'll just set it to pixels and set it around 1500 by 1500. I want a square, so I'll go ahead and click on create. Now we need a fair idea of how a stamp should look like. So I'll go ahead and open up um, Google. And as you can see, I've already searched for stamp and these are a variety of them when you click on images. So let's just pick one and work with it. If we take a look at this, this is what we are going to use as a reference, just a general idea of how a stamp should look like. So let's go back into Photoshop and grab the ellipse tool. The ellipse tool is used for creating circles. So we'll go ahead and create a circle. Whilst clicking and dragging, we will hold down the shift key and this will allow us to get a perfect circle. Now I'll hold it down like so. Then I'll grab my move tool and place it somewhere around the center. Something like this is fine. Now I have a white background, so I'll go ahead and double click on the thumbnail and select a white color from here too as well. Now you notice that we already have a stroke around our circle, which is cool. We can also just bring up the shapes tool one more time and play around with the stroke. So I can set it to about five pixels or let's make it 10 pixels and just click on OK. Now I'll go ahead and turn off the fill color to as well because we don't want anything at the center. We want it to be as transparent as possible. So let's let's just zoom out and see what we have. So I'll go ahead and duplicate this, Control J. And as you can see, we have a duplicate here. With the first layer selected, I'll resize it, make it smaller. I'll click and drag towards the center and hold down the Alt key so that we can have a perfect circle like so. And once I'm, I think right around here is fine and I'll just release and click on OK. Now, depending on which stamp you are going for, you can add in more circles, but I think we can leave it here for now. Now, let's grab our type two. Now, if you want to type around the circle like you have here, you need what we call the elliptical marquee tool. So I'll go ahead and select it from here. That is the second tool from the top and click on elliptical marquee tool. So you right click, then you click on that. Now you try to draw a circle, a perfect circle like what you already have in there. And if for some reason you have made a mistake with that selection still active, just right click and go to transform selection. And this will allow you to make adjustments to the selection. So something like this, slightly bigger than what we already have. I think something like this is fine. So as you can see, we have a little bit of space right between the selection and the inner circle. Now, again, go back to the selection tool, the elliptical marquee tool, right click and go to make work path. Now set the tolerance to about one and click on OK. Now, once I'm done, I can grab the horizontal type tool that is for typing click on any of the edges. Now, before that, let me change the text color to probably black. Now, click on any of these points around here and type in something interesting like original fake stamp association. All right, and I'll click on OK. Now you notice that the text is going a little bit wayward. So you can just use the move to click on any of the corners. You notice that when I hover over the corners, I get this double sided arrow and just rotate it to however you want. So something like this should be fine. Let me move it right around here. And now I have something interesting. 
So again, if you want to do the exact same thing for the bottom, again, go to the elliptical market tool, create a selection. If it's not perfect, right click, go to transform selections and transform your selection like how you would want it to look like. Okay, I think right around here is fine. Now this time around, we want the text to come inwards like so, unlike before which the text was on the circumference of our selection. This time we want it to be inwards. So I right click again and go to transform selections. And this time around, I'll make it much larger and slightly closer to the bigger circle instead of the smaller circle because this time around our text will be coming in from this side excuse me so once you're done with the selection right click and flip the selection around so you go to select inverse now you notice that the selection is outside unlike before the selection was inside now it is outside now you can go back to your selection tool, right click and go to make work path. This is very important because if you don't select the outside or invert your selection, it is still going to be like what we had previously. So now if I click on this, you notice that I can just paste in my text like so, and it is going all around. So again, I'll grab my move tool and I just click on any of the four corners and rotate it however I want to. And let me pull this up slightly probably around here is fine and just click on okay now the rest we can just type it in there like so so i'll just type in original i can't spell today original logo let's probably make this um all caps so i'll go into the character option and type and click on the all caps icon if you can't find this, just go to window and just make sure that character is checked. So once I have that, we can go ahead and increase the size. Let's make this center line, probably something like this. Let me bring this to the bottom. Again, increase the size to however you want it. And probably change the distance between the first text and the second text to about 30 points. You can also leave it as auto. That is what most people will prefer, but I just want to keep a reasonable margin between them. So I think somewhere around here is fine. Now you notice that we have the text right here, just merging with our big text. So I'll just change that. Let me bring this slightly towards this angle. Okay, left, 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 right, right. I think somewhere around here is fine, perfect. Now move this maybe slightly to the bottom like so. Now this is also cool. So what I'll do is I just want to take these parts out. So you can go ahead and play with it however you want. I can decide to draw in a shape like this and bring it down. Then I'll change the text logo to probably white. So let's change that to white so that you can see it. So I already have something like this quite interesting. Now this is our second circle, the smaller one. I want to take some parts out. So this time around, instead of using the elliptical marquee tool, I'll use the rectangular marquee tool. And I'll create a selection around here like so. So these are the parts I want to take away. Now since this is a shape, you can't just use the delete key to delete. Like you see, we have this um, error message. So what you can do is you can just create a layer mask or you can right click and make this a rasterized layer. So once it is a rasterized layer, then you can delete. But again, I'll just go with making it a layer mask because at any point in time, if I want to make changes, it is going to be a lot easier. Let me make this a bit bigger. So transform options or transform selection and make it slightly bigger. I think something like this is fine. And I'll just click on the new layer max icon down at the bottom here. And I'll invert the selection. You notice it is selecting this part instead of where I actually need. So invert the selection with the layer mask selected. Just hold down the control key and press I. So I to invert. And basically this is it. So this is our logo and this is, or probably this is our stamp. 
And this is what you are going to be using for our document. I noticed that the previous time I did this, a lot of people were asking, how do I put this on a document? So we are done creating our fake stamp, but to sell it a little bit more. Now you notice with stamps that when you put them on a piece of paper, not every part is evenly distributed like what we have here. So if I zoom in, you can see every part is quite nice. This doesn't look realistic. So if you take a look at this, we have some patches in here where the colors are not filling in. And this is what we want to create. Now to create that, just search for splatter. Now I'll go with this particular one, right click and I'll save it onto the computer. Now I'll go ahead and import it onto this particular space. So I'll click and drag it here, resize it however I want. And let me bring it to the top. So as you can see, because of this icon, it means it is a smart object. So I right click and go to rasterize layer. Then I'll grab the magic wand. This will allow me to delete everything besides the black spot. So I hit delete. So as you can see, now we just have our splatter. Now let's go ahead and merge all of this up. So you can hold down the control key, shift and press E, and that will merge it up. But at some point you may want to make corrections. So hold down the control key, the alt key, the shift key, and then press the letter E. So this will merge it on top so that your main layers are not affected like what we have here. So let's bring back our splatter, hold down the control key, click on it. Let's hide it for a second and we'll come back to our actual form. Let me call this actual stamp. So we come back to our actual stamp and hit delete on the keyboard like so. So as you can see, no, let me bring this up so that you can see we have some parts actually missing. So let's do it one more time. This time around, let's bring our splatter somewhere here. You can also just right click and flip it horizontally. You can rotate it however you want, just to sell the illusion that it is an actual stamp. So again, hold down the control key, click on that for a selection, come back to your actual stamp and just hit delete and it will delete those parts for you. So let's see what we have. Now this is looking quite interesting. So let's go ahead and save this. So go to file, go to save us, save on computer, save a copy. Make sure that it is set to PNG because we we'll actually need this. We will need it in a PNG format to get all the transparent background. So let's go ahead and open up a document. Probably this is a document that you want to paste it in. Uh, place your cursor where you want it to be and just go to the insect, go to pictures and go to the device where you want to select it from. In my case, it's on my desktop, so I'll go ahead and select it. And as you notice, it's quite big, so I'll reduce it to however I want, probably around here, probably stretch it out, any way you want it and go ahead and save it. So if I go ahead and click on file, export and save this up. Let's save this on documents, probably desktop instead. This is what we have. If I scroll down to the bottom, as you can see, we have a fixed stamp right here. So if for some reason you are not interested in having it in the black color or anything like that, just go back to your actual stamp, double click on the right side, or just go to the FX icon right here and click on color overlay. This will allow you to manipulate the color however you want. So you can set it to red, you can set it to blue, any color that you are interested in. You can even make it a gradient overlay. I prefer using the gradient overlay because it's from one color to another. So it sells the effect much, much better. So you just select that, go to the bottom here, select a color that you want. I think blue is quite a good color that is quite um, similar to what we use for stamps. And I'll go to the stream right, also double click and I'll select probably a purple color just to sell the illusion a little bit more. 
and basically this is what we have so thank you guys for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you like to watch more of our videos hit that subscribe button and as always don't forget to share with your family and friends this is Theo from Final Concepts and I'll talk to you guys in the next one